Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Duff Dog and I are, we don't know what we're doing. We got stuff to do. Uh, High Pockets is coming up, a buddy of mine from Watertown, he's going to get an intake manifold off of, I believe a 364 Buick Nailhead, the 1957 Buick Roadmaster converted into a motorhome. We shoved that thing in the trees last year when we unloaded it. We got to get that thing drug out for him because it's in the trees and we don't want him working in the trees. So we're going to drag it out up front here. You might get the exhaust manifold off it too because he's working on something that he needs that stuff. And we got to move some other stuff around, get some other stuff out of the way. We're going to move a couple cars out of the shop. We're going to maybe move a Pontiac in there so we can start working on that. But anyway, let's just jump into it. Let's jump into Bernie and uh, do tow truck things. Probably need the keys. Got them. Looks like we got my equipment trailer in the way, so we're going to get that out of the way. And then we're going to get that thing moved out and we're going to put a square body in there because as you can tell it's square body skid row not want to be motorhome skid row can you move a trailer with a tow truck with no hitch we're going to find out all right you follow me ah, maybe we'll go down a little bit there we go Let's see how many times we can bang it into the back of the bernie here Thanks to Bernie here. Looks like we had some weather coming in, so we better hustle up. We got a flat tire, so we should probably fix that while we got her up here. Get the old telehandler and lift it up. Throw another five on five wheel. This thing is a real peach. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about those American Motors porcelain coated exhaust pipes. Those are pretty neat. That's pretty neat. All right. Let's uh, get some more cars moved so we can put another one inside. In case you haven't guessed, that 389 in the uh, shed is for this 63 Pontiac Grand Prix. We got this car last summer out of a chicken hatchery. Something to do with where chickens come from. Been sitting inside for a long time. They took it apart. We're going to fix it all up. Kind of like uh, that 63 Impala we just got off the lift. But let's put this one on there. We got the engine all ready to go. Dust checking her out for critters. Maybe the 55's got some critters, maybe the two awesome Nova does, but anyway, we got to move some tires out of the way and let's get this thing put on the lift so that we can start working on it. What are you doing? Spare my bumper brake with you. Oh, sucker. Well, you can drive this thing out. Finally got a second to uh, take my breath, kick, take, take my breath, catch my breath. We got the Grand Prix up there. I got a whole bunch of orders packed. Mojo has been putting together boxes for caps. We're waiting for the caps to come in and then we're gonna ship those out. You guys absolutely killed it on uh, ordering caps this week. The T's shoved under there. We brought this in so Mojo's got his parking spot back. We're gonna pull the quadra bog off this and hopefully we either got one on the shelf 
or we're gonna steal the one off of the Casper, that little white 85 Chevy pickup, because that engine is toast and it's got a good quadrant bog on it. This thing, the exhaust is dragging. I put like 120 miles on it this weekend. It drives way better than it should, but the exhaust kind of got torn loose. Uh, maybe some spirited driving might have caused that. So we got to lift that up, tie that up. We get this thing rolling so that we can get the Bobcat out. And what else? Oh, yeah. I need to uh, run all these to the post office. Just a pile of orders right here. I got to go to my storage unit. I brought this dehumidifier home to test it out because it wasn't working at the storage building. Uh, this thing's fine, so I got to troubleshoot electrical at the uh, body shop. Uh, Mojo took some studs out of that 235 exhaust manifold. We're gonna run that to town and get that planed off so we can put a uncracked manifold on White Lightning. Uh, viewer, went on Mortski.com, battery sponsor. So we're gonna take that core into town and we're gonna get a new battery. I think Faulkner fixes all, I think is what he goes by. So we're gonna pick up a new battery for him and use in a video at some point. But yeah, going to town, do all this stuff. I'm gonna donate blood, cause uh, it's your civic duty. And then I got a board meeting for the uh, museum at four o'clock, last one of the year, hopefully. I mean, not that it's bad, but <clears throat> they shut down over the winter, so last one, so. Busy day, finally catching my breath. We got plenty to do when I get back. So I'm gonna go donate blood, go to the post office, all this fun stuff. And what are we gonna do it in? The orange Ford. Oh yeah, it started raining. We got uh, high pockets hooked up. You got the intake manifold. So that's putting a dent in what we paid for that because we paid too much money. Uh, the manifold was too hard to get at or he didn't need it or I don't know. But we got a couple bucks in our pocket. Let's do this. So many hats and banners. All right, back from giving blood. This thing worked flawlessly. Picked up some boxes to ship some more banners. Wildfire Lift sent us something. Hey everybody! The C Hello, YouTube world. The C the CEO of Tits Up Ranch is here. It's me. Hey, it's me. What are you you baiting in flies in the dash of your uh dented candace? This is why you guys gotta buy decals so that so that his kids can, can, can have a door that opens on their vehicle. That's I like how you like like didn't like just fully tape it in. Like it's just you wouldn't even know that it's that it's Black Sam. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of that's a lot of flies. Yes, you gotta move a little bit down. All right, we're gonna have to uh, address the exhaust situation here. She's hanging a little low, but we got some spectators over here. Kenny, show them your sticker. No. All right, uh, things got pretty wild last night with the uh, Tits Up Ranch crew, Pookie and his wife and children. No, just kidding. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Those those kids, I uh, enjoy it when they come here and run around. Nobody gets hurt. We, we slide around the shop floor on the floor creeper and we ride up and down on the hoist and do all sorts of dangerous things. We climb up and down the mezzanine stairs and we get Duff to chase them around. We feed Duff too many treats and Duff enjoys it because they drop pizza everywhere and they drop Oreos everywhere. Yeah, they brought us Oreos. They left us Oreos and a gallon of milk. But yeah, we got to get this thing done and off the hoist because we got to use the lift later today. And we gotta get this stupid Roadmaster out of the out of the yard. I got like three different people who message me and they're like, man, what is going on there? What is with that thing? That thing is super great piece. Okay, they didn't say that. But yeah, that thing is hideous in front of my house. So I gotta put a tire on that and shove that back somewhere in the trees in a deep dark hole, never to be seen again. I think why everybody hates it is because of the color. It's that Puddin's Fab Shop green, so it's just hideous. It belongs in the trees. We should paint it a different color, right, Duff? Oh, you're all muddy, you goon. Dang it. It's my new shirt. Oh, you got the zoomies this morning. You're all wound up. But yeah, hit us up for uh, Tits Up Ranch, Deckles, uh, supporting Pookie and his family. I get those at Mortski.com. And here's what we got from Wildfire. This thing is lighted. That's lit. So we gotta find somewhere to plug it in where we got an outlet. And it's got these neat little standoffs. And look at this. Those great guys over there in Minnesota even sent us a template on which side is up. So that is freaking awesome. It's got hardware. So all we need is a ladder and a, some common sense, which is hard to find around here. So I'll we'll find a spot for that. 
Maybe we'll put it on that wall by the clock or something, seeing so we got power over there. I don't know. But oh, DB, look at this. So I grabbed this wheel, I just glanced at it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's like 88 to 94 Chevy pickup rim. I had him label all my wheels. So we got, we got a stash of wheels, so it's like when we go get this Oldsmobile, it's like, hey, I need uh, four five on five bolt pattern wheels. You go to the spots, five on five, they're all labeled, you grab four of them, head down the road. They gave him this fancy Dexter axle thing. It shows uh, four and a half, four and three quarter, five inch, five on five and a half. So all you do is you line up the holes and you write what it is. Well, that is not my writing, that's DB's writing. It says four and three quarter. And I'm like, huh, maybe it is a four and three quarter. So I put this on there. Nope, sure enough, it's a five on five. So DB got me there, minor details, whatever. Didn't screw anything up, but he labeled a bunch of rims like 16 by three. I was like, Ford never made a 16 by three. So sure enough, I go through a tape measure. I'm like, they're a 16 by four, pal. So uh, reading numbers and tape measures is hard. And we're not gonna let him hang the old wildfire sign up because we had him hang up the lug nut guy's sign and uh that didn't work apparently he doesn't know what washers are so the uh screw there just kind of pulled through the hole so we got to climb up there and put a washer in it oh db i hope you're learning a lot in school i think he's a sophomore this year maybe he's a junior but he probably won't come back after all the harassment we've been giving him we hope he does though he's a pretty he's a pretty good kid he's better than he's better than 1.0 the first one we got that one if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all that's what my that's what Mama Mortsky says. So, we gotta get a wheel on that thing. We got a tube in this tire. We gotta hang this sign up. We gotta get that thing off the lift. Oh, one of, uh, super cool. He uh, jabbed a fork of his tail handler through his dad's 1976 Elite Radiator and AC condenser on accident. So he said, you got a spot for that? And I said, yeah, we'll throw it in the scrap with the other radiators. So we gotta find a home for that. And that's the uh, Rochester Ford Jet. Off that 57 Buick, we're going to file that away with the other carburetors. Speaking of carburetors, while we were gone yesterday at the museum meeting, nothing crazy to report there. It was kind of year-end stuff. Uh, Mojo stole the quadra bog off of this, and then he stole the quadra bog off of Casper, our white 85 Chevy two-wheel drive short box. Put it on here. Runs like a million bucks, like I knew it would. I noticed we got to put some rib nuts in this radiator hold-down plate because... Yeah, I remember that's why I bought that thing. And we gotta put some shocks on this thing. So, first things first, we gotta get this off the lift. Cause I took on, cause I took on some customer work. So Bobcat, that Bobcat company, has a whole fleet of Ford excursions. Are they excursions? No, Ford Edges and Ford Fusions. And they all got 2.0 liter turbos in them. But the cars are owned by, a leasing company named MK, and they gotta get the oil change. We're in a small town. Nobody changes oil in town. They were having the Bobcat dealership do it. Bobcat dealership called me and said, we don't like doing this. We ain't got time to do it. We're not set up to do it. Are you interested? And I said, what's it pay? And they said, very well. So we figured to give it a shot. We've been doing it for a few months here. They usually give us like three at a time. So anyway, we're getting three cars today. We gotta change oil, check the air filter, check the brakes, rotate the tires. Check the belts, a couple other things. But it's it's kind of a hassle, but at the same time, it's it's keeping us from losing the shop. So we gotta get this off the lift because we're not gonna change oil on the ground. So Pookie and I checked this thing out last night and he and he says, Can I weld it? And I said, I don't know, can you? And he said, Good call. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get some plumber's tape and we're just gonna suck it up to the floorboard so it don't drag. Really, this thing needs all new exhaust, but I think we've decided this is gonna be a parts car. This is gonna be a donor. We're gonna rip everything out of this and put it in some other car because this thing is just so rotten. The interior's wasted. It's all cobbled together, but it drives really well. It's got great brakes now. The electrical sorted out. It's got a lot of good pieces to put in something that's not so good right now. But anyway, let's uh, figure this thing out. If you don't remember, there's uh, the collector pipe. There's a down pipe. This is straight pipe, so number three, number four, number five. We're gonna count the muffler, because that is a chunk of pipe, six. Seven, going up the rear end. Whoop, whoop, eight, coming out the back. There's 16 pieces of exhaust on here. I feel like you could have done it in four. So there's 400% more than there needs to be. The park brake is what's holding it up. Usually I cut these, but seeing how that is now an exhaust hanger, I think. 
Oh, I bet we could put plumber's tape right over that bolt right there. Suck it up to that. We'll see. Because I think if we just push it up there and weld it, it's, it's just going to eventually crack again. That's not what welds are for. Oh, maybe that. That one isn't too bad. I don't know. There's not even clamps on the muffler. This car is so terrible, yet so good at the same time. Get your uh, Dirt Reynolds decals at Morsky.com as well. All right. Uh, you know, I think I'm just going to weld it. It seems way easier. All right. Commence to welding. Once I move this tripping contraption out of the way that uh, Pookie's children left last night. Somebody said they quit making these things. The bone creeper, they're so good. The worst part about them is when you're welding or torching all the sparks, it's like a funnel and they run down your back. But they got these ginormous wheels. They roll over everything. They're super rigid. They don't have like openings here, so they eat your shirts or your, your ponytails if you're DD Speed Shop. But yeah, somebody said the pandemic killed these guys. You can't get these anymore. Glad I got two of them before they commenced. I got that thing for $5. It was like brand new at a rummage sale, an estate sale or something. It said five bucks, I couldn't grab it quick enough because I want to say they were like 150 bucks back then. So if somebody knows a really good creeper, comment down below. Like I said, I'm set, but they need a, somebody needs to replace the market for the old Bowen. Can you see why they call it the Bowen? Yeah, marketing genius. The only thing that kills them is if you run them over for, with trucks. Uh, don't ask me how I know. That gas tank isn't leaking, is it? Nah, we should be a fine to weld this all up. Sure, it'd be nice if there's an exhaust clamp to clamp onto. Enough for the girls we go with. Well, that's pretty interesting. This thing's got uh, wheel bolts instead of studs. They're not left-hand thread, at least. And then it's got this alignment dowel pin on there, which I'm sure you could take off there, but you either got to drill a hole in your rim or take that thing off there to put a regular rim on it. So we're gonna have to find a different rim than what I'd picked out anyway. Just out bobbing around. Well, there you go, Buick Roadhouse. There's your new home back here in Skid Row with our other terrible Buick Mino purchase and a Ford 9, no, 8N tractor for parts and this sweet Suburban we got for parts. I forgot that we had this 5.7 uh, diesel square body chassis back here. We got to, uh, we owe Midland, Midland? Area diesel service we'll area diesel service a video on this one because they got us an injection pump for this 57 diesel and we need to get that done so we should probably put this somewhere where we'll be able to find it in the middle of the winter maybe you think we can set it on top of there <sighs> may as well try I would highly recommend not going inside of the Buick Roadhouse to see what the interior looks like or you might get a 5.7 Oldsmobile diesel conversion and a BOP Turbo 350 transmission stuck on your melon. We should be able to find it this winter. Fishing it down off of there might be a different story. I'm just really impressed with the uh, engineering of the old Buick Roadhouse house part that it hasn't collapsed because there's some weight up there. Looks good, Duff. I'm sure the springs on the old Buick are real happy right now. All right, I just spent, I don't know how long, fulfilling cap orders. 
and we're like 50 boxes short. So Mickelson is on the uh, lookout for some boxes. He's in the big city on his way this way. So hopefully you can find some. So we can get you guys' caps out. Got all our oil changes and tire rotations done. By the time I do this, my day is about shot. I gotta run to the bank. I gotta run to the post office. And I gotta run and get that battery that I never got yesterday. Yeah. Running errands. Mojo swapped this quarter bog out yesterday. I think I told you guys. Now he's playing around with the lights on this thing. We had some brand new aftermarket taillight lenses, so he's putting those on there, getting all the lights working. And Bluezer's gonna be pretty nice when we get her done. All right, Duff Dog and I are gonna go run some errands. Hopefully we don't run out of gas. We could finally be uh, done running errands. So, found out, I picked up Stain the other day. We went for a ride in the uh, Dirt Reynolds here. Wonder where all that rubber came from. But anyway, uh, the tires rub when you get two chubby individuals such as myself in here. So, we're gonna Fix her up the proper way, and we're going to get rid of these old uh, Monroes, I'm guessing. And you guessed it right. We're going to put some, some new Monroes. These ones, uh, MA708. Look at that. They come with airline. <laughs> I hate air shocks, but this thing needs leaf springs. And where the leaf springs attached to the frame uh, are in pretty sad shape. Yeah, like this one's already got a, a lug nut in there for a spacer, and uh, it's not doing anything. And uh, and I got some new leaf springs, but I just, I don't want to take these out. Because that seems like a lot of work, and uh, bad things are going to happen. Kind of like how this shackle is rubbing against that fuel line. We don't need to worry about that. Right, Duff? He's like, I want no part of this. I will see you later. He'll ride in it, though. Uh, and like I said, we're going to probably use this thing for parts. So let's just put some air shocks in it so that we can utilize this thing better. I even drove a bunch of gravel with it. Yeah, this thing's pretty good. So air shocks, there's two bolts that go into the body up there. I don't know what's holding them on the top and I hope they don't spin. Wish me luck. All right, uh, air shock install is pretty much complete. I didn't tie up the hose in the trunk because I didn't see the need and I don't really know where I want it. And let's be honest, this thing's gonna get knocked in the head at some point anyway. So no point in getting it too nice. Here's what we did, uh, basically just a stock shock replacement those bolts came out really well up there so good work dirt and then you just angle this fitting to the best of your ability uh, the shock on this side is in front of the rear end it's on the back side of the rear end so you could only run it this way on the passenger side on the driver's side you could win either way but since we're going this way on this side i angled them both that way drill the hole through the trunk by the uh, wheel housing and then i slipped some vacuum hose over the airline here, tech tip of the day, always protect your hose, you know? Put a rubber on your hose, your airline, and just find a rubber hose that's slightly bigger diameter. So like usually when I'm running my fuel line, that's what I learned in derby car days back then. You had like a three ace fuel line, get yourself some five ace heater hose, slide your fuel hose inside of your five ace heater hose and boom, you protected it. So yeah, so she won't rub through where we drilled through the floors. Anyway. Ran those both in the trunk, teed them together in there. I don't really like these air shocks because they're usually designed for just like a shock absorber. They're not meant to hold the weight of the car, but this example has got this nice big bracket, this plate on the rear end, which is pretty rigid. Usually there's just like a stud coming off the rear end and those studs are not designed to hold the weight of the car, but these should actually do pretty well. It's uh, some robust 
what is that? Three eighths steel there, five sixteenths, and then plus it's bent and formed, so should be pretty dang solid. And then I think this is where we were getting some rubbish actually, so we might want to take care of that. Broke the handle on my other sledge the other day. What's this? Eight pounds? This is a new one. We haven't even marred it up yet. Body by Mortsky. We should make that into a decal. Oh, sorry about your 10th anniversary collector's edition Trans Am. All the clearance. Clearance? Clearance? Two four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? And we just made the car that much lighter. It's probably more structurally rigid now, too. Now we just gotta put our Weld Pro Stars back on, set her on the ground, give her some air. Just for uh, S's and G's, let's, I don't know if this side is rubbing or not. Looks like it already kind of self clearance, but let's uh, clearance the driver's side a bit too. I need a left-handed hammer swinging around here. Spray some undercoating on it, she's ready for Barrett Jackson. Let's see if it raises it up. To be honest, I can't believe there wasn't holes back here for air shocks already. Oh yeah. See, it's not really meant to lift the car, it's meant to support the car, I think. We don't need much. Like I said, I think we found a rubbing issue on the uh, inner wheel well. It really wasn't. The shocks are going to help, but I think if we'd have beat them in, we'd have been just fine. Until we picked up all that beer in Longmount, Colorado. Is that where we got to go to get the Wibby? Yeah, we're going to need the air shocks for that load. Alright. Good to go. Now that we got our shocking situation figured out, we don't have a tachometer speedometer, so I got this guy. We tried one last time. Instead of the uh, $50 one, I think we got the $100 one. The HUD. Car easy to install. Oh, vehicle after 2008. Son of a biscuit. Well, that might be enough. 100 bucks we donated to China. Let's give her a whirl. Not getting anything out of this guy either, this heads up display, so must be something different on the 2007 and newer, older OBD2s where they don't communicate with these things. So if anybody knows of one of these that would work with like a 99 to 02 LS, let me know. We got bolts, we got Oil pressure, we got water temp, and we got a fuel gauge. Yeah, right there. They all work, but I want a tack or a speedo. It'd be great to have both, but you need to know how fast I'm going and not use my phone all the time. So I guess we're just gonna keep on winging it. Dang it. I don't even own anything newer than 2008, I don't think. Son of a biscuit. All right, I'm not much of a decal guy, but somebody sent us to, I'm, I'm sorry I can't show you out because I have since lost your name and address and everything else, but the same guy who did the Torola decals across the windshield of uh, Puddin's Torola sent us one for this thing. It says Dirt Reynolds. Of course, this thing is as white trashy as you get. So let's put it on there. I think the only thing that I even have my own decals on is my Suburban, because it used to be my dad's, and he put the decal on it before I got it. And we got the Mojo Craft decal on uh, Bernie out here. White Lightning has a couple in the back window that I probably had too many beers in, put them on one night, and that was way before YouTube days, but I don't think I got my own decals even on anything. I'm just, I'm not a decal guy. I mean, I like decals, but I just don't put them on my cars. Anyway, let's clean up some windshields. Windshield, rear window, whatever. Let's get these put on there.
need to install them. Decals? God dang it! No! It's not talking when you do it. Son of a biscuit! I was gonna say T top cars. Come on. Fudge nuggets. You know how hard it is to not use profanity in these videos? Oh, crud nuggets. This is why I don't. Oh. All right. Let's regroup here. Yes. No. Nope. nope. We don't do stickers on vehicles. That's why. <laughs> and I don't want your suggestions on how to do a better job of putting stickers on windows because it's just, it is not. Nope. It's not my thing. I appreciate whoever sent this. I tried, I really did. The back one is crooked and it's got a bunch of bubbles on it. And I was gonna get this one so perfect. And yeah. Anywho, I know I should have put water down, yada, 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 soapy water. Just, just not a, not a deco guy. This thing would have been white and obnoxious. It would have been purple, dark purple. It would have blended in with the car. And maybe the guy that's watching will send us another one. We'll try it again. Try to have some patience, but nope. It's just the T for a T-top Trans Am. Ugh! Maybe instead of, yeah, well, that's what we should have. That's what we should have. Instead of like an obnoxious name like Dirt Reynolds, we should have like 20th anniversary, 1990, 1990, 1979 Trans Am. My dyslexia is kicking in. I mean, it's been, I've been, it's been a long day. I've uh, been in the shop for like 12 hours, well, not in the shop, running errands. We've been going all day. And I still got a, a bunch more orders to pack when Mickelson drops off some boxes because we ran out of box for these hats. But anywho, uh, yeah, like a nice, like a factory looking 10th anniversary Trans Am in like a Indy car, a pace car, how they have on the doors. You know what I mean? That white, I mean, it's cool with the, the line through it. I kind of dig it, but I get, look at how crooked I got it. It's terrible, and there's a bunch of bubbles in it. I don't have patience for this stuff. And it's kind of a two-person job if you're an idiot like me, but we'll leave that one on there for now. But I think it would be cool to, yeah, have it like the silver and red and say, 10th anniversary Trans Am, 69 to 79 or something silly up here, just 10th anniversary Trans Am. So it's like we kind of think we're cool when we fully know that we're not cool. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna kick this thing outside now. I don't remember what else I was gonna do. I don't like leaving this thing inside because all the electrical is terrible on this thing. So I unhook the battery when I leave it inside. I unhook the battery when I take it outside because the battery goes, there's something electrical and I don't wanna lose the shop due to an electrical fire because of this thing. But at the same time, I don't really like leaving it outside because if it rains, obviously it gets the engine in the interior. I don't really care if it sits outside. If we start it every day, it seems like it's good. So we'll take this thing on an ice cream cruise because we're running out of those days. It was like 50 degrees this morning. It's a little chilly. Mojo wore his jacket. So anyway, I think we're gonna kick this thing outside and maybe roll this thing up. I got some shocks for the front. Like I said, we can swap that carburetor. Ooh, we should put some rib nuts in here. Anywho, it's only, it's not that late. Let's uh, find the rib nut gun. And Screw these down. Screw Dirt Reynolds. Speaking of that, I don't know if we talked about it. We put a brand new windshield in this thing. Well, like in Christmas of 21? Yeah, this thing hasn't got many miles. Maybe it was last Christmas. It was last Christmas, probably. Nope, two Christmases ago. It was in the old shop. Corey at Perfection Auto Glass. He came down. We put this one in. I think we did Chin's pickup. I think we did that little Casper pickup. I think we did my Black 92. We did a lot of windshields. All right, I'm gonna go find that uh, rib nut tool. All right, we get ourselves a radiator hold down. Even use some, I don't know if they're stainless, probably just zinc plated hardware. So the reason I like these, I call them rib nuts. I don't know, nut certs. What do they call this thing? This is made by Astro Pneumatic. 
nut thread setting hand riveter kit. So basically you got this guy, it's a big rivet gun and you, uh, this is your mandrel, I think they call it. Yeah, you don't want to get too crazy because you'll break the mandrel and then you got to buy a new one. They got mandrels for all different sizes. Uh, I got mainly quarter, three eighths, five sixteenths are what we use. These were five sixteenths. You just thread that guy on there. First you drill a hole to the right depth. Thread that guy on there, spin it apart, spin that out, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. It works really great in situations with usually thinner metal, obviously. You don't want to be, it's not going to work if you Try to put it in three quarter inch metal. And at that point, just drill and tap it. So we're sure they got on this sheet metal and it's uh, if it's a blind hole, though know they call that? Or you can't get it the other side. I don't know what they call it, blind, three blind mice. Why don't they just call them like uh, Ray Charles holes? I don't know. You got the right one, baby. Yeah. Anyway, terrible joke. But put that in there and then you don't have to get a wrench to hold the other side. They're real good. I like them. I like them a lot. I like it a lot. All right. Uh, I think I got a, yeah. There's a couple fan shrouds in the back here, I noticed. So let's see if one of those will work. And then between a small block that's super mild and super tall highway gears and super light vehicle, super low to the ground, aerodynamic, and a new radiator. Did I already say that? And a big old clutch fan. This thing should cool just fine, but I like fan shrouds when they're possible. A, it keeps your your fingers out of there because you don't want to get your finger in a fan it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up and b it pulls all the air across the radiator and to the engine so let's see if either of these is going to fit our application that's one thing i don't like about fan shrouds is there's a gazillion of them there's small block big block six cylinder with ac without ac heavy duty radiator Standard duty, three row, four row, two row, California option. Uh, I think I got all of them, but anyway. And then they probably changed between 73 and 75 and 76 to 78 and 79 to 80 and then 81 to 84 and so on and so forth. Square body fan shrouds are a giant pain in the butt. But, oh, that's funny. Cause we stole, this thing came with electric fans. What do you suppose those electric fans want? Right on here. Oh, freaking bluzer is the gift that uh, keeps on giving. I don't like electric fans, but. Hey, wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? <coughs> guys, guys, guys! We couldn't really put a mechanical fan on that thing. It was already set up for them. And they pretty much just clicked in place. All right, fan shroud time. I really need some hood hinges because these things are slopped out and I'm sick of cracking my melon. These things are real good at piercing your skull. Third time is a charm. Had to go dig through the storage shed. And this is the only fan shroud I got. Other well, plastic one, so down to two. Yeah, I could make a video out of organizing all my fans and shrouds and air cleaners and stuff like that, but we'll leave that to pudding. Uh, you guys don't want to see me organizing shelves full of 10W30 oil or organizing my 916 wrenches. But anyway, we found one. I wish it was a little bit deeper. It, just catches the front edge of the fan it winds up perfectly like i said there was a million of these uh, shrouds and i could space the fan ahead but i think it's going to pull all the air it needs to it's going to be way better than it was this thing probably was never going to have cooling issues but i like shrouds this one's not going to protect your fingers that well so hopefully that's uh not a foresight but anyway then i found an air filter air cleaner oh yeah and mojo identified that we don't have a dipstick so this thing came so this thing came out of a like a 70, I think it was a 75, 75 Chevy G20 van. Um, 350 and a turbo 350. Or does it got a turbo 400? Anyway, 
I think it's 350. I don't remember. But van's everything different. The, the tranny dipstick is two miles long and the engine dipstick is a mile and a quarter long. And uh, air cleaners are smaller. So I didn't like that one. Plus it had, a, had this spacer. What's that, like a two inch spacer underneath there? So it just is hideous and it's got this little short snout that's all dinged up. So I found this guy. It looks like it's date coded 76. So it's probably off a 76 Chevy pickup. We need to get an air filter for it because I don't have one of those on hand, but we're gonna put this guy or gal on there instead. And the reason that I'm a geek about air cleaners is because when you open an engine, a hood cover, bonnet, whatever you guys call it, on the other side of the pond, when you open the hood, that's the first thing you see right there. And I hate those like open element chrome jobbies. They're just hideous. They're hard to find replacement filter or, you know, you can't just look at the number on the filter. You can't go into the store and say, hey, give me a air filter for a 76 Chevy C20 with a four barrel. No, you gotta go by dimensions and it's just a pain. And around here with the gravel and the cattails and the corn, what do they call beeswax, all that, they, they just get full of stuff and they look terrible anyway. So I like original looking stuff. And don't paint them neon green and don't paint them blue and don't flip the lid upside down. Chevy power. Just get a nice air cleaner that matches your vehicle. If you got a really nice 69 GTO that doesn't have the Ram Air, get the right air cleaner. If you got a whatever, 73 Mustang, do the same thing. So this is off of like a square body Chevy pickup. We're gonna put it on there. It looks perfectly crappy, just like everything else under the engine bay. Yeah, and then you get those chrome air cleaners and you gotta have a spacer usually because they don't fit on whatever carburetor you got or the throttle linkage hits. So you're gonna have to put a different uh, stud on here, but yeah, it's gonna look so much gooder here. We'll mock it up quick. Hopefully Napa Todd can hook us up with a air filter. Yeah, doesn't that look so much gooder-ish? So originally when I when I started this project, I was like, let's, let's see how cheap I can do. I got this van for like 575 bucks at an auction. I paid a hundred bucks for this thing. My buddy was literally throwing away the C10 pickup that we got all the suspension from. I paid for the wheels and tires, used most of the van exhaust. We paid boom tube to do a little bit of exhaust work. Uh, we had a radiator in it. These guys sent us this one. I don't even remember who they were. So we got the radiator for free, uh, paid for the bracket. Had a battery sponsor, obviously. So yeah, we're into this thing pretty cheap. It's, but I didn't put new brake hoses. I didn't put new radiator hoses. I don't think I put gaskets in the engine. I probably put a front seal on the transmission because I am I hate those when they leak. But yeah, I don't think we opened the engine up. No new belts. Like I said, this thing was done on the cheap. So don't, don't scoff at some of the stuff under here. We spliced the wiring out of the van, so it's kind of just hanging there, but it's cleanish looking, you know, factory looking. Gosh, we didn't even pressure wash the power steering pump. Gross, didn't put a new master on it. But yeah, it stops good, but yeah, it could definitely use. Man, we didn't even tune it up. We didn't even put plug wires on it. Oh my gosh. But anyway, that's what I was getting at is like this thermostat housing is hideous. It's van stuff. I should put a nice clean normal pickup one on there. We put new heater hoses on at least. Really broke the bank on that. New fuel hose. Didn't put new battery cables on or nothing. This thing was done. Cheap, but it should work. Anyway. That was, that was my rant about engine bays. I don't like clean engine bays, obviously, but I like it so it all blends in. But you put a chrome air cleaner on this thing, or some shiny headers or shiny chrome valve covers, they just look, they stand out and they make everything else look terrible. And then those air cleaners, if you don't take care of them, the lids get all rusty when water sits on them. And, ugh, just grinds my gears. You know, that really grinds my gears. All right, I'm gonna go look for a carb stud. Better get my stud finder out. Dad joke. Beep, beep, beep. Looks like I found the stud. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're gonna take the old uh, bluezer here. That's made voyage to the post office. Mickelson showed up with a bunch of boxes. So, got a bunch of caps packed up. I'm no pudding. I don't have a dedicated merch van. So, this old hot rod's gonna have to do. Boy, that tailgate. No bueno.
All right. Let's uh, take this thing for a road trip, Duff. All right, made her back. No, uh, okay. We lost two boxes out the back window. I had to turn around, pick them up. Not an ideal uh, box hauling machine. Oh, I should have reached in the window on the other side that doesn't have a window. Hopefully I don't have Oreos in my teeth. Mrs. Pookie, she uh, left me a box of Oreos and yeah, I'm addicted. Anyway, so because of the drop, we're gonna use these Belltech drop shocks, part number 8005. And then the rear, because we got shock extensions, we're just using stock gas shocks, hopefully black ones. Renovator 270-180-893, many in China. Where's the Beltex, man? They're so good, they don't even tell you. Well, it says KW Automotive North America, 300 West Pontiac Way, Clovis, California. Maybe they're made in America. Wouldn't that be neat? So, I'm going to put some shocks on this thing because it is miserable, bouncy to drive. Maybe we should tighten that bolt up and put that bolt in the sway bar. And that one. Oh, we got to drill holes or knock rivets out. Nothing's ever, e nothing's ever easy, is it? So, basically, you got a bolt for the top and a bolt for the bottom of the shock, right? So, you got this guy in the frame. Bolt's in double shear because it's... Clamped here and clamped here, bolt goes through the shock, easy peasy. And then same thing at the bottom, bolt goes through here. In a factory application, you get two half inch bolts. On the bottom, that's fine. Top, not so much. You don't want a sloppy hole. So what we could do is make a bushing or we could get a five ace bolt that's not sloppy. Fits real nice. And then just ream it out to 5 ace. So that way, if we ever get this same shock, we just drop it in. Because I'm guessing that bushing, if we were to make a bushing, is going to seize in there. The other thing we could do is knock off that tab. And we still have to ream it out the 5 ace on the frame. And then you could put this in there. This comes with the uh, shock. But then it's only in single shear, meaning it's it's only clamped right here. And then you got all that leverage prying on it, crack your frame out. So, but if somebody ever wants to put normal shocks back on it, they'll... Uh, have to make their shocks out to five ace, but not my problem because these are never going to wear out and we we'll probably won't sell this thing because never mind, everything's for sale except the dog and Mojo. Are you for sale? Look at that antenna on the old Delt or the Jetstar one. You can get uh, stations all the way to Arlington, Texas. All right, I'm going to ream that hole out because it's really not a project unless you got a reamer out. We had to use the reamer. Up there. Chin loves it when I use the reamer. It's my favorite tool. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Then we use our stock bolt on the bottom. We might have to spread these tabs. That's pretty common, I guess. Same thing on the other side. There you have it, front shocks are done. I think that double shear bracket that need to be reamed out is only because this thing, too much coffee because this was a four wheel drive frame. So four wheel drives must have different upper shock mounts. Cause I don't ever remember having to do that on any of the other ones. Chin, did you have to do that on yours? All right, let's go on to the rears. Hopefully no more surprises. Hey, look at them new banners we got. Get yours at mordski.com. We got a couple of them left, but we're fresh stocked up on them. So here's where we at with these guys. Uh, our shocks are too short. There's the original bolt. And we even got a little load on the suspension. It's still about four inches too short. And then I went and looked 
and four wheel drive mounts are higher than two wheel drive mounts. So we're gonna just take this stud out, drill a hole in the frame and move it there. And we might even, since we're gonna be able to dictate where that goes, we might uh, take these extensions off. We'll see, same deal on this side. This one seems like it's even shorter yet. It doesn't even reach the bottom of the frame. So we're definitely gonna have to take this bracket off on this side, but we'll get her figured out. There you have it. The other side is drilled down here at the bottom. This one's drilled up, I had to move it up. Um, it's 13 inches from uh, hole center to hole center. I don't know, I think it's just the way the frame kicks down back here versus how it uh, kicks up up there. So yeah, we should have the same amount of travel on both sides. Got our windshield all washed up, got it on the ground. It's gonna be so much better without shocks. This thing was just waving down the road when you drove it. So I think Duff and I are gonna take her for a rip, test her out, and uh, see how she goes. I'll let you know. I'm sure everything will be just fine. Uh, the exhaust likes to come in the back window, so hopefully we don't get asphyxiated. I'm sure we'll be just fine, since how it's missing that side one on these other two side windows and the floor pans and everything else. The top's gotta go, but I don't have any help here to take it off, and I don't have anywhere to put it. And it's kinda getting to that time of year where we're we'll gonna have to put it back on anyway. We'll probably take it off tomorrow. Who knows? All right, let's go for a ride, Duff. Now I just gotta find him. Oh, put another like 40 miles on the Transmero bird today. That thing is good. We well, got about 30 miles in. And other than a whole lot of rattling, and mainly that's the garbage riding back there. This thing's not bad. I gotta put a floor pad in it because where my heel rides for my my gas pedal foot, my, my driving foot, my strong foot. Oh, that's heavy. Woo! That's heavy. I better use my strong hand. It's a, it's a little squishy down there, so I'll probably put a floor pad in. And the seat isn't terrible, but it's it's also not not very good either. So we'll have to look into something there. I do like the low back look, especially if we're gonna take the top off. I hate high back bucket seats. I have that to the list of 5,362 other things I hate. High back buckets. Unless they're factory. Stop putting 96 Chevy pickup bucket seats and things. And 93 Pontiac Bonneville seats in your 52 Chevy pickup. No, don't do it. Don't. I don't care even if you take the headrest off. Don't do it. Duff, you're slobbering all over my nice dash pad. Duff likes it because there's all kinds of uh, windows to stick your head out of. All right, see you back at the shop. All right, so the old K5 drives great. It cools good because, I mean, everything does that doesn't have a temp gauge. Tech tip of the day, if you got something and you're worried about it overheating, just don't put a temp gauge in it. It'll never overheat. Same with that uh, oil pressure gauges. But anyway, uh, this thing's gonna get an alignment next week, and then this thing should be pretty much good to go-ish. I think somebody reached out and said they got some side glass for it. But yeah, this thing drives, drives really good. The tires are sitting like this in the front, so if we uh, aligned it and get them sitting good so we don't wear out our new Cooper Cobras, that would be good. But uh, anyway, yeah, carburetor works phenomenal. Air cleaner looks good. We got a new filter and put in there. Just kidding. Uh, it's it's still sitting on the seat. It's Pro Select. It's the finest that uh, Napa Todd had for us. But anyway, we're gonna get in old Reggie. We're gonna check the oil. We're gonna maybe wipe the dust off of it and uh, 
yeah, throw some decals in there in case we run into some of you guys. And we're gonna run down to Watertown, South Dakota to the Vintiques 44th Annual Car Show. They got a, a really good garage tour in the morning. They got a wine up downtown midday. I think they feed you the night before, they feed you that night, and then they do a poker run around the lake. And I think they give you breakfast on Sunday morning too. Uh, you get a, a plaque and all kinds of good stuff. It's just a really, really great car show. I lived down there for a few years, so I know a lot of people. So I get to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while. I haven't been there in a few years because of other obligations. I think last year, a year ago, Today, Chin and I were uh, at LS Fest down in Bowling Green, Kentucky with my dad's Buick. Check that video out if you haven't. Dad's thoroughly enjoying that car. We got to get it back in the shop. We got some suspension upgrades for it, but I hate to tear into it now because we got a pretty limited driving season up here in the Great White North. So let's just wait till the temperatures get a little cooler. Maybe there's some snow on the ground. We'll bring that 66 Buick Skylark back in. We'll do some suspension upgrades. But anyway. We're gonna jump in Reggie and we're gonna blast down to Watertown. We're gonna go to the car show. So that's kind of the end of the video here. I'll, I'll talk a little bit, but I think we're just gonna show some cars and uh, yeah, so enjoy the cars and uh, thanks for watching. And I like going to a couple of car shows. Watertown is probably one of the higher ones on my list. Really good. If you're ever in Watertown in September, I think it's the second weekend of September. Go check it out. Really awesome show. A bunch of great people, a bunch of great folks, and a bunch of cars. The quality of cars. That's why I love Watertown's Car Show. Not only because they have so much stuff to do and just how it's set up so you can kind of come and go and do things as you please, but the quality of cars that show up there is a 9.8 on a 10 scale. I mean, for the Midwest, you cannot beat the quality of cars that are in Watertown. All right. Let's jump in, Reggie, and let's do this. All right, here we are. We made it to Watertown with old Reggie. Uh, stopped at Trav's Outfitters. Uh, those guys are awesome. Go check them out if you need uh, some work shoes or apparel or the, you name it. They got pretty much everything. Hiking, working, motorcycling, camping, hunting. Uh, anyway, I noticed my right shock bracket broke off. I think the left one is broke twice. So we need to redesign the shock mounts on old Reggie here. I don't know what's going on. It was just driver too hard. That or they were uh, ready to go. But anyway, we're in Watertown. Uh, the weather's a little bit overcast, but let's uh, take a look at what they got. This car show is always absolutely phenomenal. The Vintiques does a great job. I think it's like their 44th annual or something like that. They've been doing it a couple of days. All right, let's do this. 67 to 72 Chevy Ambulance. Still got the stretcher in the back. But that thing ain't got many miles on it. Oh, Starfire convertible. These things are so cool. Factory buckets, console, pack. A couple of Mopars. Three of them, four of them. Ooh, Kregers on the vet. Those are brand new. I've never seen them with the uh, Kreger casting by the bell stem. Then again, I never look at them. Stick car, 56 wagon. I'll make you famous. Thank you. <laughs> 47 with some trailer wheels. LEDs, headers, red plug wires, red insert, all of the good stuff. No flexi hose though. This thing is freaking sweet. I think it started as a 35, 36 Ford uh, Cabriolet. Dual quad nail head, style grill, spotlights.
good. 64 Galaxy. Well, we went into uh, Watertown Brewing Company, had some lunch. Looks like the car show left us. Well, Reggie just hanging out by himself. All right, after the car show, they come out to Lake Campeska here, and they do a little car show out here and a polka run. So we're gonna cruise through this, see if we can see anything that we didn't see downtown. GTO, Fastback Mustang, Mach 1. Mock something. Edges cars.
Well, it's a new day, Duff. We made her back from Watertown late last night. Picked him up at the lake. We got a few bugs. And by a few, I mean probably a few thousand. We picked up Zeke, and he gave us a three quarter inch ratchet wrench to get our shock off, because it was bouncing off the ground. Did you have fun at the lake? Yeah? Hanging out with Poppy? But anyway, uh, yeah, we went out to the lake. You saw that, we went out and saw the cars there, and we'll let Duff outside, because it's he's got to do dog things this morning. It's a gorgeous September day. I think it's 48 degrees this morning, but anyway, uh, Watertown Car Show of Antiques, I think it was their 44th annual. They do just an awesome job. They feed you Friday night when you get to town. Saturday morning, they have the garage tour. I got egg yolk on my face? Maybe. Uh, and then Saturday, they have the car show downtown. I heard 300 cars pre-registered. I bet there was, usually there's like four to 600 cars downtown. The weather was a little bit deterring, so there probably was a few less this year. And then they take you out to the lake after that, they feed you out there, and then they do a poker run around the lake. That's When that happened, that's when we darted out of there because it's about a 110, 120 mile round trip for me and I wanted to get back and pick up Duff and try not to hit too many bugs and hopefully not hit a deer. But anyway, and then today I think they give you breakfast and then they do the awards on Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning now. So yeah, great show. Hopefully we can get there again next year. It seems like there's always a freaking wedding. I've been in more weddings the weekend of like September 6th through the 13th than I care to uh, discuss. So that was the first time we'd been down there. It was good to see uh, my buddies Chris Craft. He, him and his wife, they were on the garage tour. Uh, Zeke, him and his wife, I haven't seen them since they got married. Uh, I got to see them. I got to see Schultz. He went to the Demolition Derby in Marshall, Minnesota. Took his pacer there with a 4.3 and a Turbo 400 and my borrowed 462 gears and a Ford 8 inch. And one, so nice work, Schultze. Got himself a few bucks in his pocket. A pretty good payout, actually. And uh, now I'm gonna go, I actually bought a car on my way down there. A buddy, I found a car, you know, cause that's what I was doing. Facebook Marketplace and driving, not safe. And I sent a buddy up to get it, so him and I are gonna go get that car. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's just uh, an adventure in old Reggie. Things are really good pickup, other than we gotta fix shock mounts, heats, just a little bit so we might have to uh i got an aluminum radiator sitting there let's stab that thing in it needs a couple of updating things but like it needs a bigger gas tank it needs a bluetooth radio just so that you can talk hands free when people call you and you can listen to your music on your phone as opposed to the terrible radio stations we have up here yeah it's a it's a pretty dang good pickup i think we probably got close to three thousand miles on that thing this year Nebraska was 887. Well, like I said, Watertown would say 110 each way. Uh, so 220 miles. So yeah, we put, you know, what's that? 1,100 miles at least in just those two trips there. So it's been a pretty good pickup. Go get yourself a nice running, driving vehicle. That's that's my suggestion. Projects, they suck. Like this thing, junk. It's been a lot of work on this thing, and it still drives like hot garbage. I mean, granted, I still have slightly less into it, into the old Bronco than that thing, but running and driving cars are the way to go, especially you get the right one. But anyway, Duff quit harassing the birds in the bushes. Thank you very much for watching. Check out our merch, mortski.com. Check out our other videos. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that. Uh, we're on, uh, we got a Facebook page, Mortski Repair Fan Group. We got Instagram. We got Patreon if you want to help us out there. Uh, yeah. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. And the Vintiques Car Show in Watertown, South Dakota, every September, real fun. We'll be back. Maybe we'll bring some merch next year. We did meet a few of you there, so thanks for saying hi. I signed one guy's ball cap for sure. Took a picture with another guy in his cute little white lab cash. He's like eight or ten weeks old. And uh, yeah, a few other folks said hi. So thank you very much. And I give pretty much everybody that I saw, I think, a decal that recognized me. I didn't just hand out decals, just people who knew me. All right, we gotta go get a new car. I need to stop buying stuff. This one runs and drives though, allegedly.